thank everybody for all the support that I saw on the last video about whether or not Peterborough is a sustainable community and the review of the ACS data uh, supplied by the NHHFA. I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up to that because there's something that I didn't quite get a chance to go into in that video that I wanted to take a minute to go into here. And that was when I spoke about utilizing TIF or tax increment financing district money to subsidize housing projects uh, for workforce and affordable housing. So it's a way to free up money. And it was, I, I noted that I agree with Sununu on this, okay? Well, I wanna be clear that there's sort of a limit to how much I agree with him. And I think it's important that we discuss this because it's important to understand nuance that it's you that, that saying yes or no to something is really a black and white answer and it doesn't uh, take into account any of the shades of gray. So I wanna get into some of the shades of gray right there and explain some broader context for why this is a problem and some other related things. In New Hampshire, we have what's called the LLC loophole. Now, what that does is it allows for private companies, LLCs, limited liability companies, to donate money separately from individuals. So they're, they're not linked. Now, if you are the owner of an LLC or you are a, a, share, a stakeholder in an LLC, you are able to exceed your own personal campaign donation limits by donating through that LLC. So if you want to give more money to a candidate than you're personally allowed to give, you can just do that. Under current law, an owner of multiple LLCs can make campaign contributions at the maximum amount of $7,000 to a single candidate for every LLC that he or she owns. Many people would consider this to be a form of legalized bribery. I happen to agree. Others may not agree with that, and that's, that's where they're at, and okay. I personally feel like this is pretty undemocratic uh, because it does give more power to people who are richer and I, I don't think that any one person should have more speech than any other person because they just simply have more money. Sununu takes advantage of this LLC loophole all the time. It's well documented, it's well known. And what's well documented about it is that, or one of the things that's well documented within it is that a lot of the contributions that ex are done through this, this loophole are done by friends of his that are developers. So exactly the group of people that would benefit from a deregulation that permits local tax increment financing dollars to go into private hands. In that sense, it's it's purely a, a money-making endeavor. It's purely a, a, a privatization endeavor. It's it, As far as they're concerned, it's a way to take government money and, and get it out of government, basically. Um, get at some, especially because the way TIF districts work, that's captured taxation that the state's not getting and the municipalities are hanging on to it. So on another level, it's a way for him to, to get money that he wouldn't even normally be able to get at through the state, right? So this is like, this is a super boon for them. Now, from my perspective, this is just, it's from the progressive perspective or the, you know, the more, the more left perspective of it, it's just a way to free up money so that we can do something because the economics of, of building are just completely, they're, they've bottomed out in terms of being able to make something affordable. So there is common ground there, but it's, it's important to denote that very, very quickly that will turn into a huge fight over what happens and how those laws are specifically written when you go to free up that money from those TIF districts. So anybody on the left or the Democratic side of things, when approaching this, would really want to consider building in serious controls that don't allow uh, private entities to come in and really just take advantage of and ransack these TIF districts because that money really is designed to improve that community. That's what it's there for. And yeah, it's just, it's important to 
acknowledge that difference and that nuance because it's easy to have something get taken out of context and say that I would support the privatization of all this. I don't support it personally. I just support freeing up money so that we can do stuff. And I think it's really important to build regulation into that process despite deregulating it or making it available. Now, that gets into the housing thing. But the LLC loophole is a broader issue. And it allows for this one problem to exist on one side. But it's important to also acknowledge, and this was just reported by NHPR from Josh Rogers and Casey McDermott, that Dan Feltis, despite saying that he's not taking PAC money and not, you know, not skirting this stuff, is indeed taking PAC money, and he's also taking advantage of the LLC loophole through somebody that works on his campaign. So this is something that's, it's, this is not a partisan technique, okay? This isn't like one side uses it and the other side doesn't. This is something that, that runs throughout, and it's, it, you see it with Republicans and Democrats alike. And if you feel a concern about not being able to have a say in the amount of power that a private entity has, as opposed to, say, a government entity, right? Because realistically, you know, if you're not comfortable with big government, why would you be comfortable with corporations having that say instead? I mean, the, it's, you're just talking about a different power monopoly and one that we as citizens have less say over. It's tough to say, but it's certainly disheartening to see that being taken advantage of at this stage in the game, especially when campaign finance reform is such a, a key issue for a lot of voters. And it's a huge issue here in New Hampshire. Andrew Belinsky certainly has come out and said that he doesn't take PAC money. He's not utilizing the LLC loophole. He's attended <laughs> last year's uh, Granny D Memorial March, uh, which was also attended by Lawrence Lessig. And there are plenty of resources on that that you can check out. Uh, Valinsky was endorsed by Bernie Sanders, so we know that there's there's a link there. It would, you know, one could <sighs> infer that there's a general movement within the Democratic Party at large right now to be more labor-oriented, to be more people-oriented, to um, take apart, reduce that amount of power, give it back to the people. And campaign finance reform is, is one of those things. So for Democratic voters looking at the primary going into 2020 for the governor's race, it's something to keep in mind that The, this is this is a, a, a notable difference between the two Democratic candidates that have announced so far. So it's important that we acknowledge that and um, and address that half of of it too. Obviously, there's just so many problems with the amount of money Sununu is getting, and despite there being an idea on that side that links back over and helps. On our side, it's something that we can we can sort of agree on and compromise with. It's important to remember the limits of that compromise and to know going into trying to allow TIF, fun, TIF money to be utilized by private developers. It's it's something that should be really really highlighted walking into that discussion. Because if it's not, and it's not considered and not built into just non-negotiable terms to address that problem, then we could be looking at a huge ransacking of local money that Sununu can't even touch as governor. I mean, that's like the way ta TIF districts work. They capture tax dollars at a locked rate as the, you know, the state money goes up. People continue to pay the, that, that rate. but 
the town continues to pay the same tax rate that it was when they established the TIF district. So the state doesn't get to see that money right now. Only municipalities do. And for Sununu's developer friends who are, you know, probably already getting a decent amount of government contracts are thinking, geez, how can we get more money out of this? Why not free up the town's monies too? I don't know. That's sort of that little addendum. Just wanted to do it quick. I want to say thanks to everybody for just tuning in to, to the video. Uh, please check out some of the other stuff on the channel. We've got videos of last year's Granny D Memorial Walk. I've got a video talking about bills that Sununu vetoed that gets into some of this campaign finance re reform stuff a little bit more deeply. We've got more stuff coming. There's some video stuff that I want to break down, just like other content that I saw go up on MUR or stuff that I've heard on NHPR, things like that, that I want to sort of just discuss a little bit. Uh, we've also just got some more interview stuff lined up. I do have some more stuff in the pipeline that will be original, original reporting content. So definitely, definitely keep an eye out for that. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. I understand that it can be a little bit annoying for some people, but you know, we're sporadic in our posting a little bit more lately, so it it really does sort of give you that notice when something goes up. To become a patron, support this local journalism stuff. It's just absolutely crucial for folks to stay informed and know what they're doing when they go to vote. At whether it's town meeting or or the primary or the presidential election, we got to have the information available and anything helps. So definitely if you're enjoying this content, if you like the stuff that we cover, if you feel like it's giving a voice to, to something that's not getting a voice, if you hate it, but you like rage watching it anyways, awesome. Become a subscriber, become a patron. And thanks so much, folks, and we'll catch you soon, all right?